hey, we've got merch again, and new merch, and there's more coming soon. Don't tell anyone. Go to slowmoguys.shop. Links in the description. Hello there, I'm Gav. Welcome to the Slow Mo Guys video all about how a pinball machine works. Firstly, I want to say thanks to Jersey Jack Pinball for providing the machine for this video. It's a Willy Wonka machine. It's very nice, very colourful. I've been fascinated by pinball for quite a long time. I was introduced to a real pinball machine by a Canadian man named Ed. Before that, my entire experience with pinball was the significant percentage of my childhood taken up by this. And even though we live in the future now, well beyond the days of electromechanical scoring, the actual play field itself uses components unchanged for decades. It's still very mechanical, and not only that, very fast moving. So why don't we whip out the Phantom and play a little game of pinball. Since I got this machine, I've played a lot of Wonka Pinball. And I've determined some areas of the playfield that I want to feature, but it's going to be an extremely fiddly job. So I've got the Flex 4K with the probe lens on, and I'm going to use that with this extremely bright light to, to really get in there. Okay, the glass is off. I think we should start with me just playing a cheeky game of pinball, just so you can see everything that moves, and then we'll get in there for the slow-mo replays. The game is fully functional without the glass, and now there's no glare for filming. However, I'm slightly worried about taking a pinball to the chin because they do go flying in multiball especially. And also without the glass, something that I wasn't expecting, this machine is now incredibly loud. There's a, I guess a huge sound dampening effect with the glass cover. So get ready for some clangs and clunks. I'm not sure if you knew this about me, but I'm actually phenomenal at pinball. I'm really good at, from this flipper, hitting it so that it bounces off this target here and drains at about 165 miles an hour. That's probably my speciality. All right, high score coming up. In all seriousness, I'm a total pinball novice, so apologies in advance for my sorry display of skills and potential incorrect terminology. Starting with a gobstopper, if you hit it once, it will spin around, revealing a hole, and then you can hit a ball in, locking it for multi-ball. It's actually a virtual lock. It's not keeping the balls physically. It pops them back out into the shooter lane just there. But uh, one of the ways to build multiples is to activate various locks. Now we're in the pop bumpers at the top. I'm sure you've seen these on a pinball machine. Extremely fast moving, extremely loud. Down here, if the pink light is lit, the kickback will prevent the ball from draining on the outer lane there. When it's not lit, you lose the ball. Locked another ball for multiple there in the gobstopper. When the yellow light in the center middle is lit, the ball will be diverted from the gobstopper ramp down onto a magnet to be hit through the spinner. And when the super lock light is lit, that will lock a ball for the Wonka Vator multi-ball, which as this machine is the standard version, is a virtual lock. On the limited edition, collector's edition, this is a physical lock that sits at the back there and it will physically store your balls before dumping them back onto the play field. As you can see now, I'm in what I like to call slingshot hell where my ball is just bouncing back and forth between the slingshots. Finally gained control, started gobstopper multi-ball. Locked three balls and all three are now auto-plunged back onto the play field. Multi-ball still freaks me out even if I know what I'm supposed to be aiming at. Just the fact that there's so many balls in the play field and you still have to keep your eye on when a ball is about to hit the upper flippers and the lower flippers. It's a lot to look at. And it didn't help here that I actually started a second multi-ball, the kid multi-ball, within the gobstopper multi-ball which caused all six balls to be on the play field at the same time. There's a lot going on. This is actually a, a montage of several different moments from the same play session, um, but there are bits cut just to show different stuff happening a lot quicker. So we can get to the slow motion. If you get the high score, when you submit your name, it'll take a picture of your face and you'll hear a little thunk inside the machine, which we'll get to later. To fully show how this machine works, I'm going to need to film underneath the playfield, and thankfully you can just pull it out like this, and everything is still fully functional. I can activate pretty much everything. You're also able to push it up fully. The most common way for something to move on the pinball machine is through switches and solenoids. Uh, you can see a few of them here. 
Uh, this empty gap in the bottom left, that's where the, the Wonkavator ball lock would be if I had that version of the game. A solenoid is basically very tightly coiled wire which when a current passes through will create a magnetic field pulling the metal rod through the center. This one is the flipper and this one is the vertical up kicker in the ball trough responsible for deploying balls and they work very quickly. So why don't we get straight into slow-mo starting with the vertical up kicker of the ball trough. Pressing the start button hits this switch which activates the vertical up kicker in the ball trough, firing a ball straight up into the shooter lane where it will roll down and is ready to be plunged by the plunger. On a full plunge, the ball will go right round the top, straight into the pop bumpers. This was the part of the machine I was most excited to see just because the ball so quickly bounces back and forth between these multiple times per second. You can see the way it works is when the ball rolls over the white plastic, the rod connected to the metal ring above is pulled down by a solenoid inside. So when it rolls over the white plastic, this leaf switch completes the circuit, activating the solenoid that pulls this rod down. And that is connected to the ring above on the top of the playfield. And the way the ring is angled causes the ball to be ejected out from any angle that it approaches the pop bumper. You can see it's now activating the switch, rod pulls down, ball fires back out. It bounces seriously fast. I counted here that the ball went back and forth eight times in less than half a second. Absolutely insane. Now heading down to the flippers, classic area of a pinball machine. As you can see, press the button, flipper moves, hits the ball away. It's a very strong mechanism and there are actually two circuits regarding the flipper. It's a solenoid once again um, actuating this arm. There's a circuit for the initial high power burst of current which is needed to move it and then a separate lower power circuit to hold the flipper in place if you want to hold it up just so you're not running high current through it constantly. The spring will return it to its resting position. When you physically press the flipper button a little piece of plastic is pushing against metal leaf switches inside when one piece of metal knocks into another, it completes the connection. You may be wondering, why is there three? You can actually press just the first one. That activates the lower flipper. When the first piece pushes the second piece of metal into the third piece, the entire circuit is complete and the upper flipper goes as well. Usually both flippers go at the same time because you're really smashing those things. This is the slingshot slightly above the lower flippers. You'll notice two leaf switches sat either side of this kicker, also powered by a solenoid inside. When the ball approaches from either side of that thing, it will complete the circuit, causing the ball to be kicked out. Often, straight into the other one, which causes a nice back and forth between them. This is the gobstopper hole. When a ball goes in, as I mentioned before, the ball is locked, but it's actually just returned to you through this plastic channel underneath. And then using another vertical up kicker, is shot straight back up. And that is the ball that you continue playing with comes out just slightly higher up the shooter lane than where the ball starts originally. When multi-ball starts, the game will just launch balls onto the playfield for you using the auto plunger. This piece of metal is shaped to come out either side of the normal plunger, whacking the ball at full speed back up the shooter lane. When you hit the ball up the gobstopper ramp, the ball can either continue straight through, depending on where you are in the game, or if the yellow light is lit on the left there, once the ball is detected using the optical sensors, this diverter piece of metal will come down from the top, slowing the ball down enough for it to just drop through this hole in the side. If the ball's traveling full speed, it never falls down there. The ball will then fall down onto a magnet where it's ready to be hit by the upper left flipper into the spinner for usually some mad points because every full rotation it activates this leaf switch on the right here so you can see if you hit it through there and it spins 40 times this switch will be pressed 40 times which could mean 40 wonka bars if you've got super spinner activated now we're into some multi-ball i'm honestly so surprised at how often the ball just leaps into the air. Sometimes it will hit the glass when you're playing. Up here in the center is the captive ball, which operates exactly like a Newton's cradle. You have to hit the ball hard enough for it to send the far ball into the target. 
Basically just a target you have to hit pretty high. Now one of these balls is going to drain out of the left outer lane, which is the one that has the kickback, which when lit, if the ball rolls over this metal rollover switch, it is automatically bashed straight back out and your ball is saved. I spent a lot of time filming this machine, but one of the most fascinating parts of it to me was something I noticed when I was filming the flippers. The ball is rarely hit just once. The first impact almost stops the flipper and the ball, and then as it catches up, it then does a, a secondary push or a secondary hit to the ball. And not only that, without a ball, the flippers decelerate so fast that it ripples the rubber away from the plastic. This all occurs in around 0.1 of a second, so incredibly difficult to see with the naked eye. First, I thought something was wrong until I noticed this behavior on every single flipper, even the upper one here. Such force that the rubber completely comes away. In my quest to become better at pinball, I was learning about a move called a live catch where you sort of meet the ball right as it lands on the flipper and they sort of both cancel out each other's momentum. It's, I guess, like the closest to a real-life frame-perfect trick that there is in pinball. So I was thinking maybe the rubber whipping away from the plastic on the flipper actually extends the possible window of a live catch because it's literally extending the flipper itself and cushioning all around the ball. This is actually not a good example of a live catch because the ball uh, still just rolled off the flipper. Usually it's been a just stop dead on the flipper and then you have it caught. Now let's move on to the tilt bob. It sits inside this machine on the left. As you can see, it's swinging loosely and it's got a ring surrounding it. So you can see here when I nudge the machine, give it a little tilt to try and save the ball, it gave me a warning because it detected that the tilt bob had hit the ring. And it, it's a big part of the game to sort of smack the machine around, but if the bob hits the ring three times, you get a tilt, you'll lose your current ball and lose your bonus. Finally, we have the knocker. It sits in the back box, so I've got to take this part off. And it's the thing you hear when you get a high score, or if you roll over the special. And it's just a solenoid with a plastic tip rod that <laughs> thumps a piece of metal. <laughs> Incredibly simple. Well, there we have it. I honestly found that so interesting, just shoving the camera in different spots and learning how each piece worked just from the footage alone. I found it fascinating. I really enjoyed that one. Hopefully you enjoyed it too, even if you're not into pinball. Maybe you found it interesting anyway. Big fat thanks to Jersey Jack Pinball for supplying this wonderful machine. And honestly, supplying me with a new hobby. I've been in here almost every day for the last month, uh, just trying to get into Wonka's office. Haven't done it yet. It's actually, uh, it's an easy game to sort of get going on, but it's, it's a lot deeper than you think. There's actually a ton to do. And uh, I'm really just scraping the surface on it. Okie dokie, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you share it with someone who likes pinball. And now I'm gonna briefly talk about the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Skill. <laughs> this video? <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes so you can pick up a new skill or broaden your existing passions. If you're a regular viewer of the Slow Mo Guys channel, you may be interested in plenty of topics on Skillshare varying from film and video production to photography, uh, entry level and more advanced skills. One Skillshare class that currently interests me is this one on lighting. Most of our videos honestly have been lit by the sun outdoors and I'm really interested in learning about different types of lights in a studio environment and I feel like this will be the perfect place to get that info. Then I'm probably gonna buy some lights. Skillshare is learning focused so there's no distractions like ads and there's new premium classes added all the time. It's less than $10 a month if you choose an annual subscription. And you can get your hands on it by going into the description of this video. The first 1,000 people who sign up will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe if you like it and kick the old bell in the face. I'll see you in the next one.